When I was a child, I used to wonder what it would be like to learn maths in university. Maybe the professor would come in and say, Right class, today we're going to learn to prove the existence of God using maths. But when I actually got to university, I learned that learning pure maths at a high level is actually quite a lot different. So in this video, I've put together the different levels of pure mathematics and at the end you can tell me in the comments which level you think you are. Level 1. Basically everyone knows this. If you're on this level, you're either a big sweaty man called Paul and you think that one third is smaller than a quarter, which is why the third pound burger was a massive flop, or you're an insufferable child who just learned how to use YouTube and you've stumbled along this video. This is the stuff that they absolutely require you to learn before you leave school, and for good reason. Otherwise, you wouldn't understand even how money works and you'll probably end up a drain on society. Counting, basic arithmetic, fractions, decimals, percentages, and all that jazz. You also have a basic understanding of what the word average means and you can just about hold down a job, only sometimes you need a bit of help. Level 2. Child Nerd. On this level you learn how to find the missing number using algebra, but you still can't find your dad who's been missing ever since he went to go grab some milk. You'll also begin to understand how you graph a linear function on an xy plane and that angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees, angles in a quadrilateral add to 360 degrees. Understanding 2D and 3D shapes and how to use basic trigonometry like sine, cosine and tangent to find the missing sides of a right angle triangle. Let's say you've got a right angle triangle and you know only one of the other angles and one of the other side lengths. To find the other two sides, first label the side opposite to the angle as O for opposite, then the side opposite to the right angle as the hypotenuse, and then the other side is just called the adjacent side. We use the acronym SOCATOA, which stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan, tangent, equals opposite over adjacent. And we use the function which contains the side that we have and the side that we want to find. We plug that angle into this function and then rearrange arrange to find the missing value. Without this knowledge you'll probably manage okay in day-to-day -day life unless if your job has anything to do with maths or science in which case you'll move on to level three. Pure maths enthusiast. Now we get into the real stuff beyond the just basic common knowledge and into something that only people who subjected themselves purposefully to pure mathematics would know. Sequences and series, vectors, matrices, logarithms and exponents, complex numbers, proof by induction and all that jazz. Proof by induction is where you prove something is true for all all the natural numbers by first proving that it's true for n equals 1 and then proving that if the statement is true for n then it must also be true for n plus 1 therefore if it's true for 1 then it must be true for 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Although this is more pure maths than the average person would know you're still nowhere near the point where the pure maths becomes truly pure. Where the math has no current applied usage for it yet but you're still learning it to prepare yourself for the real world where none of it comes in handy and you get a job at McDonald's. Level 4. Mathematical rigor. This is where you start to use rigorous mathematical proofs rather than just the standard, oh look at the proof I did, I used algebra to prove it. No, I better see you using words like hence, furthermore, therefore, otherwise the proof is invalid and so are you. On this level you learn about multivariable calculus, introduction to real analysis and rigorous calculus, linear algebra but like on steroids, abstract algebra, basic topology and maybe some elementary group theory. This is basically the undergrad level where you're pretty good at school maths but when it comes to university maths you're kind of new to it and you're still a bit flustered. But TUT, I was already flustered. I've been flustered. I was flustered ever since you opened your mouth. And that's why this video is sponsored by Brilliant. <laughs> In this world there are two types of people. People who can do maths, people who can't do maths and people who can't even count. And you might be thinking, oh well I don't care about Brilliant because I'm not even a maths person. Person. Well that's where you're wrong. Brilliant will make you like maths. Because rather than sitting in some classroom with a teacher who's more interested in speed running the syllabus, you'll learn through active problem solving. A method that research has shown to be far more effective than watching lectures or videos. Finally, you can build genuine understanding of each topic and reach serious learning goals rather than just memorizing a bunch of formulas that you know for a fact you're going to end up forgetting. Brilliant helps you excel in maths and computer science with visual interactive active problem solving and personalized practice. They also start you on the right level based on your background knowledge and design practice tests and reviews personalized just for you. Aww. Brilliant's comprehensive catalog takes you all the way from foundational maths through algebra to college level
calculus with more courses being added each month. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org forward slash the unqualified tutor, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description. Brilliant has also given our viewers 20% off of an annual premium subscription. Woohoo! That gives you unlimited access to everything on there. Level five. Ah! Metric spaces, sequences of functions, uniform convergence, complex analysis, basic measure theory, Lebesgue integration, Galois theory, etc. If you have a sequence that converges, that means that as the sequence goes off to infinity, the value sort of just converges or settles down on one number. Now, if instead of a sequence of numbers, you have a sequence of functions, and as the index of the function increases to infinity, for each individual point x, the values f sub n of x approach f of x, this is called pointwise convergence. Essentially, all the individual points just converge to f of x, but if they all converge at the same rate such that there exists an n such that for all n greater than or equal to big N and all x mod f sub n of x minus f of x equals epsilon where epsilon is greater than zero then this is called uniform convergence. Level six, doctor of the philosophy of pure mathematics. Giga based, sigma, infinite aura, I can't lie, no cap, for real, for real, I ain't about that Jack Doherty life, bro got locked up, also six, seven. Functional analysis, Banach and Hilbert spaces, algebraic topology, homology, differential geometry like manifolds, curvature, algebraic geometry basics like varieties and schemes, and advanced number theory, representation theory, PDE theory, and so much more. There is so much to learn on this level that the fact that you're still doing maths is honestly impressive. You should really get a life. Level seven, coming out. I am covered in mayonnaise. That's because I now sexually identify as a tuna fish. Ni hao. Motivitic cohomology, the Riemann hypothesis, you'll never solve it, advanced homopathy, and also you're basically like Gregory Perelman or something. There's nothing I can teach you at this point You've already solved one of the Millennium Prize problems, so I'm going to go now and flop around on the bathroom floor like a fish. If you want to join me on the bathroom floor, then cover yourself in mayonnaise, like this video, comment down below what level you're on, join the Discord, and then I'll let you join me on the bathroom floor and we can flop around like fish together. I need a job.